Hi everyone, in this video I will give you advices to improvise on the standard tune Stomping at the Savoy. I know it will be an important tune for Django in June. Django in June is a five days gypsy jazz workshop happening in America in Massachusetts and I will be teaching there this year. I hope to see you there. This video, in this video I will go step by step but it will be a short video like 10 minutes so it will be it will start very easy, it will end pretty difficult and it, I will go pretty fast. Let's start by seeing what we can play on the A section of Stomping at the Savoy, which is usually played in D flat major. The first thing you can do to improvise on this A section is just to play the D flat major scale, which works on all the A section. You can also play this scale here. If you don't know the major scale, you should learn it because it's a really useful scale. So take the time to print the diagram and learn all the notes of this scale in only one position, this one or this one, the one you prefer. So let's do that only on the A section. You can find backing tracks of Stomping at the Savoy, the whole song or just the A section or just the B section on my YouTube channel. first thing I advise you to do just play the right notes in the tempo play it swing and not even not like that don't accelerate don't slow down and try to play some effects for example this or it will make your improvisation a bit more subtle and more interesting but it's not it's an option just play the D flat major scale on the A section. The second thing I advise you to do is to work on the B section. It starts with a G flat seven, then B seven, E seven, A seven, and then it goes back to D flat major just before it starts again on the A section, on the last A section. So what I advise you to do is just to play the arpeggios of this chord. It's a first step, of course. After that, we're going to do much subtle things. G flat seven. B seven. Same thing for E7, and then A7, and then on the A flat 7, you can just play the D flat major scale. Or if you want, the F flat 7 arpeggio. Let's do that. Thank you. 
So these are the first things you can do on the A section and on the B section. It took me like 30 seconds or one minute to explain it and to show it to you, but it maybe it can take you six months, one year or more to master this exercise because it can be really hard depending on the level you have. Now let's go back on the A section. What you can add is the five chord. It's in D flat major. There are some chords. I won't show you now the chords of the A section. Doesn't really matter, but there is a A flat seven. And what you can, arpe you can play the arpeggio of this chord, but what sounds even better is to play it with a sharp nine, a sharp five and a flat nine, like that. It's a way of playing notes that are not in the D-flat major scale, and it sounds really good. So, now let's see the chords in this A section. play the A flat 7 sharp 9, no, sharp 5 flat 9, not on the first bar, but on the second bar, even if there is no A flat 7 on the whole bar, then on the B flat 7 chord or D diminished chord, you keep playing on D flat major, D flat major, and on the bar before the resolution on D flat, you can play this A flat 7, then D flat major for one bar and A flat 7 for one bar. So if I play the chords with the A flat 7 at the moment I can play, I can RPG at this chord, it will sound like that. One, two, three, four. Now let's see how to play melodically this chord. So the notes that are really important here are these two notes on the A flat 7 arpeggio. What I chose to do here is not to play these notes on the low strings. For example, I could have done this the sharp 5 here and not the perfect 5th here. I chose to do this and then, so it's a basic A flat 7 chord, and then, and of course I can play the root of the chord and the 7th, so it will sound like, but I can choose to to play just a few of them like because it, I think it will sound better. This tip of playing a perfect fifth and an altered fifth on the top of the chord is really, to me, sounds a bit odd and it sounds really great and there are a few players that I love like Serge Krief or Rodolphe Raffali who use this kind of subtle harmonic things and it's something that you can easily play, it's not so hard to play. So let's play again this arpeggio. Now let's improvise and let's aim this note at the right moment. Thank you. 
see that sometimes it sounds good, sometimes not. The first lick I made, the first note I played on the A flat 7 altered, didn't sound so good, but some other licks. So you have to try a lot of licks, a lot of different phrases you can play with this arpeggio. So this was my third step. Fourth step, let's go back to the B section. On every seven chord, you can add the ninth and the 13. On the G flat seven, you can play this note and this note. On each chord, each seven chord, you can play ninth and the 13. So for this first chord, G flat seven, 13, ninth, We'll tend to play them, to prefer to play them on the higher strings, like on the three high strings, three or four high strings. And there is 13 here. For this B7, the ninth, the 13, and the ninth again. So you notice that when I explain you, you can play this note, I'm not like... I try to make music with these notes. I don't just play them. If you want on the E7 chord, you can switch from this position to this one. So here is the arpeggio. It's E7 and the 9th is here and the 13th is here and here. This is a very, very, very common chord shape. So this is why I show it to you in this video. With the 9th and the 13th. This is a very famous Django lick. Then A7 and A flat 7. Let's improvise on this B section. noticed that in this step and in the previous I used some chromaticism this is something you can do anytime on any scale any arpeggio so when I play for example on this B7 chord I can play chromaticism wherever I like and usually what I do is I go from one note to another that sound good with the chord now a fifth step. Let's go back on the A section and on the B flat 7 chord you can play a B flat 7 with a flat 9. You can also think the D diminished chord. It sounds almost the same because it corresponds to the same notes. You can add the B flat. It's on the fourth bar 
of the A section and even if the chord lost two beats you can play this arpeggio on the whole bar. Let's do that! <laughs> And the last thing you can do, especially on this tune, is to play something that sounds minor, bluesy. What I like to think about is the Dorian mode of D flat. This is something that Django used a lot, especially with this lick. This is an ending lick of a song, but he did like in blue clair. He plays the Dorian mode over a major tune. So D flat Dorian would be the, this scale. And you can play, you can even play the blue scale. This is a flavor, this is a sound you can add you can play on the A section sometimes, not all the time. And it sounds really good if you play it in the right, at the right moment. I really hope that this video will help you playing better over stomping at the Savoy and maybe I will see you in Django in June.